so we're talking about colossal squids today. Not giant squid, not big squid, not even pretty big squid, colossal squid. But in order for us to talk about colossal squid, we do have to talk about what squids are. Because squids are not just octopus with like, with pointy hats, they are totally different. And colossal squid are actually also totally different from many other squid species. So let's unpack that. Um, squids are cephalopods, so they are related to octopus and cuttlefish, um, but they are in the super order decapodiform. What? Um, so they're a little bit different. How are they different? They have elonged bodies. They're not, they don't have that round mantle like you see in an octopus. They have large eyes. They have eight arms and two tentacles. I'm going to explain that later because that made my brain go, what? Um, like other cephalopods, squid have like a very distinct head. Um, they have bilateral symmetry, which just means the right side looks like the left side. And I said that by pointing to my left side while talking about right. Um, and they have a mantle. So their, their whole body, everything that they need from their brain to their stomach uh, is in their mantle. So it sort of looks like it's just in their head. So everything going on in there. Now they are different from octopus because octopuses don't have any bones in them. Um, they do have, squids do have an internal skeleton. Now it's not made of bones. They don't have any bones. They have, um, uh, they have something called a, uh, a pen or a gladius that um, just makes them a little bit harder on the inside um, rather than octopuses being very, very squishy. Now this is made of chitlin and chitlin is sort of like keratin, which is like what our hair and our nails are. So, so not a bone, just like a hard kind of, uh, um, kind of bone. Um, so sort of like sea keratin. Um, it is what an octopus's beak is made out of, and it's also what the beak of a squid is made out of. There are more than 300 different squids that have been identified, and normally female squids are larger than male squids. So. Let's talk about arms because this is something that I did not know about at all. Now, um, each octopus, as we know, has eight arms and it has suction cups all over its arms. Now, tentacles are not arms and tentacles only have suction cups at the end of the limb. So they have kind of like a club. They're like, they're quite long. They have a club on the end and that's where the, the suction cups are. Now, cephalopods, have arms, some have tentacles, and some have both. So squids actually have both. And this is why they're called uh, decaform, nope, decapodiforms, because they have 10 things going on there. So they have eight arms, like an octopus, and then they have two tentacles. So I used to think that tentacles were just arms, but they're totally different. So octopuses have no tentacles, they just have arms arms and legs like we knew. So that is super interesting and totally different. Um, now the, the two long tentacles, like I said before, um, so they are longer than the arms when you look at a squid. And I will show you pictures. This, this will make sense. When you look at a squid, they have all these, all these arms hanging out, but then their tentacles are normally much longer. They're used to, they're used to grab prey and then the arms hold on to the prey so they can eat their food. They do have a beak just like uh, octopuses do. Now their beak is, uh, is, is kind of like an octopus but it has it's a beak like a parrot. It's very very sharp and then they have radula on the inside like a snail. Remember that's how snails chew all their food with tiny microscopic little teeth. So they bite into the fish that they eat and then their little microscopic teeth make it into a smoothie and they drink it all. Now colossal squid are interesting because their esophagus, their throat that goes to their stomach, goes through, it goes into their mantle and to go through their mantle it has to go through their brain. So their brain is actually shaped like a donut, which is also super neat, colossal squid. What? You're totally different than anything. You're not just big. 
you've all kinds of other stuff going on. Um, so they use their beak, they cut down their food, um, and, and then they swallow it. Obviously, that seems kind of normal. Now, squids are also super different from octopus because they are very rapid swimmers. They're super fast and they move by jet propulsion. What? What does that mean? It's totally different from an octopus, where an octopus kind of drags itself around. It does a lot of walking. Um, it uh, uses its siphon to propel itself around. And so basically what a colossal squid does, because all squids move a little bit differently, they have a really muscular mantle cavity. Um, and what they do is they get all this water in from their gills and then they quickly expel it out of their siphon. So it's kind of like how octopuses can swim, but they do it way faster and they do it way more efficiently. Uh, remember, octopuses have those three hearts, and one heart doesn't work when they're swimming. So it is not like that for a squid. All of its hearts are working all the time, so it can propel through the water always. Um, the movement is also super different from an octopus because the mantles are much longer, and they're made for like lots of swimming, very fast, um, and sort of swimming backwards. If you think of an octopus and how it kind of like walks, it drags itself around. So its head is kind of, its eyes are sort of looking forward. A squid will propel itself. And so its, its, uh, its tentacles and its legs are down here and it's just going forward until it wants to attack something in which it will go backwards and its, uh, its tentacles will grab around its prey um, that it can go into its beak which is kind of neat. Um, so they go tentacle and mouth first when they are attacking something. When they want to go through the water, they, um, they go mantle first and they like skim through, which is pretty neat. Um, they are some of the most intelligent invertebrates. So remember, they're invertebrates. They don't have real bones. or bones made of calcium. Um, now, humble squid, which aren't colossal squid, um, they have been observed hunting cooperatively, which is pretty neat. Now, this is neat because the Humboldt squid is around six and a half feet or two meters long. And so when they think about like how big, that's like an adult big human, um, they, uh, they hunt together in herds or schools of more than hundreds when they do this, which is pretty neat. Um, and they, much like other squids and other cephalopods, change color when they attack something. So when they go into attack mode, they turn bright red, which may confuse their prey and it may show off to their friends, hey, I'm, I'm eating here. Uh, we don't actually really know why, but it's pretty neat. Um, squids eat fish that are smaller than themselves. This is an important bit to remember. Uh, but they are carnivores and they will eat carrion. So if something is dead in the ocean, like a shark or a seabird, they will eat that. Uh, everyone wants to know about poop. So I will tell you that they poop out of their siphon. Um, everything is in their mantle. And the, remember, this is also how they have like jet propulsion. They breathe in the water, they get all the oxygen from their gills, and then they, they, uh, the water comes out their siphon. This is also where their poop comes out of. So there are times that they're going super fast in the water and poo just shoots out, which uh, yeah, that's kind of funny. Um, they are preyed on by sharks, other fish, seabirds, crustaceans, but particularly sperm whales. When we talk about colossal squid, these are the predators we're talking about. Um, this is actually why we knew about colossal squid before we'd ever seen one, um, because whalers would actually catch sperm whales and they would see what's in the stomach of the sperm whales and they would see these massive beaks and they would go, I don't know what that is, but it must be colossal. Um, squids, just like octopuses, um, 
where am I? Uh, squids, just like octopuses, um, have all kinds of different camouflage. They have active camouflage that they change the color of their skin um, and helps protect against predators, but it also lets them sneak up and approach their prey. Remember, most things in the ocean don't have great eyesight, and so if they are able to uh, camouflage themselves with uh, different skin pigments, then it is uh, it's easier for them to do a little sneaky sneak. Um, it takes about one millisecond to create a change in the skin of a squid. So it's not like you look at something and go, hey, was something there? It's too fast. You wouldn't know that anything is there, um, which is also pretty cool to think about. The smallest squid we should talk about is the pygmy squid, and it, it grows to a length of 10 to 18 millimeters, which is about 0.4 to 0.7 inches. So they're really, really, really little. But that is not what we're talking about today. We are talking about the Antarctic squid, also the colossal squid. They have the same name. The first colossal squid ever reported that we saw was in 1925. And it was the head and arms were discovered in the stomach of a sperm whale. So this was the first time that we had ever really like seen one and understood, whoa, colossal squids are colossal squids. Since then, a total of eight adult colossal squids have been reported. Six of them were in the stomach of whales. So that means when we talk about colossal squid, we're doing a lot of What's that about? What, do we even know that much about them? Not really. And when we look at pictures of colossal squid, we don't really have that much. But colossal squids, we do know, live in uh, the Antarctic region. Um, primarily, uh, they circumnavigate the Southern Ocean. They live at depths of 1,000 meters, which is about 3,280 feet. They generally eat adult uh, Patagonian toothfish. Now remember that squids eat fish smaller than them. So the Patagonian toothfish is about 7.5 feet, which is about two meters, and it weighs 220 pounds, which is about 100 kilograms. So a colossal squid eats something that is like the size of a people. Okay, cool, 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 cool. Um, now, if we look at the combined body and ten tentacle length, a colossal squid will grow up to be 46 feet, which is 14 meters, and weigh about 1,100 pounds, which is 500 kilograms. Colossal squid is a very big deep sea predator. It's the largest invertebrate in the whole world, now, in February 2007, a New Zealand fishing vessel caught the first ever documented um, full colossal squid. And unfortunately, this is, it was good for science, it was not good for the colossal squid. Now, interestingly, we don't know how many colossal squid live in the world because they live so far down and they live in a region that we just don't spend a lot of time in. It's very cold in that area. But looking at how many squid beaks that we find in whales and looking at a whole bunch of other science, um, scientists think that there's 4.3 million giant squid in the whole world. So it's not colossal squid, but if we can look at how many giant squid there are, quite a lot of colossal squid as well, which is pretty cool. Now, when they caught this giant squid, they brought it to the Natural History Museum of New Zealand and said, oh, we have this giant thing, what do we do with it? And they say, we're going to dissect it and look at it and understand more about science. So it was 495 kilograms, which is 1,091 pounds. Um, now, really interestingly, like everything is interesting, when they were looking at it, they found out that its eyes were the size of a soccer ball which is so interesting because most things in the ocean don't really use their eyes to see. Uh, if we think about sharks, they use smell. If we think about narwhals, they use sonar. Squids absolutely use their eyes. And we know this because their eyes are so big. Now, if we look at the biggest 
animal in the ocean, in the world, that's a blue whale, and it weighs about 150,000 kilograms, which is 330,000 pounds, they have eyes that are the size of an ostrich, like ostrich eyes, not the animal, the ostrich. So if a blue whale has these tiny little ostrich eyes that are just bigger than human eyes, and a colossal squid has eyes the size of a soccer ball, those are real big eyes, what is going on? Now, many sperm whales do have scars on their back, and what we think that is from is from colossal squid. Because we do find so many colossal squid beaks in sperm whales, we think all of these scars are from not the colossal squid picking a fight with the whale. We think they're just defending themselves. Now, remember, they do have a classic move, which is with their, um, they use squirting ink. Now, they squirt ink generally to use as a smoke screen, and it gives them time to escape. And so if a whale, if a sperm whale is coming after a colossal squid, the sperm whale will try to like bite at it. Colossal squid will change color so we can like, you know, be camouflaged in the ocean. It will spray some ink and it will try to get away. Sperm whales are also very fast. And so this is why they have these fights in the ocean to one is trying to eat, one is trying not to get eaten. Now, there are some other really interesting squids, and we don't know if colossal squids do this, but some squids do actually mix some of their ink with mucus, and so it gives the ink kind of a solid form, and so some squids will try to confuse their prey, rather than just having like a bunch of ink in the water that they use as a smoke screen and then they go away, they say, hey, this is an animal, bite it, this thing. I'm going in that direction, which, uh, which is also pretty cool. Like you think about how smart these animals are to know, hey, if I just put some mucus in my ink, I can get away. Um, now, we also know that they use bioluminescence. So they glow underwater and they glow to get the, Pat the Patagonian toothfish get their attention. They do a little bit of glowing and the, the Patagonian toothfish go, what's that? I'm gonna, I'm gonna see what that is. And they don't normally, well, they do see what it is, but it's, uh, it's not great. Now this also is such an interesting fact. So we don't know how long it takes for squids to grow up, or colossal squids to grow up, because we don't really know a lot about them. We don't know uh, where they're born, how long that takes. But most squids only live between 12 and 18 months. So even huge squids the size of people, 12 to 18 months, that's how big they are. And they're a year old, which is so crazy. They grow very fast. Now the colossal squid has a massive fin on top of their mantle. So they are, they have this long mantle, but they have this like little hat, a uh, little pointy guy. Now that actually can um, it's a fin, so it flaps up and down, and that's really interesting because they can use that for quick maneuvering while they're hunting or they're getting away from predators. So when they are swimming by, they can they can flap their mantle whoop, 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 and go, whoop, I'm going this way, no, I'm going that way. So that is amazing. Now, I told you I was going to talk about their tentacles, and we absolutely have to do that. So, squids, colossal squids don't have suckers like octopuses do. They do have suckers, but on the suckers, on their arms, they have three pointed hooks. So they have these massive suckers, they're very, very big, and they have these hooks that they use to hold onto their food. So octopus is just like on their food, but colossal squid actually like have these barbed hooks that they go like, no, no, I am a very hungry and I'm going to hold on to this while I bring it into my, into my face. Now, those are just the arms. The tentacles are very, very long. They have this little club on the end. And on the end of the club, they have, um, they have these hooks, but they're not the three pointed ones, like the, like the ones on their arms. They're one hook, 
and the hook can actually turn 360 degrees. So the hook can turn in a complete circle. So that's how good they are at hunting because they have these tentacles that go out that hook onto the fish no matter where the fish is because it's moving. Now, we don't know if they can rotate them with their, um, with their brains or if they just maneuver around based on what the prey is doing, but it's pretty interesting to know that they have these, these little twirly hooks going all around them. Um, making more squids. How does that work? Now, females generally with, um, with normal, with smaller squids, normal squids, they plant their eggs in clusters. And what they do is they make a big squid mass and um, it's communal. So a bunch of mom squids will put a bunch of eggs into kind of like a mucus, um, uh, sort of, it looks like a finger, it's like a gelatinous capsule. So a bunch of them will put eggs in it and they put them on the sea floor and they just kind of like wait. And then when the squids um, are out of their eggs, they come out of these, these kind of like mucus clusters. Now, that's what normal squids do. We don't know what colossal squids do, but we do know that giant squids make a giant egg that isn't connected to the sea floor. It is a giant floating mass. It's about four meters, which is 13 feet across, and they have 50,000 eggs in them. These masses are rarely seen by humans because they, they're laid very bottom, uh, very, very deep near the bottom of, uh, of different parts of the ocean. And then they sink lower and lower and lower. Baby, baby giant squids hatch at about 150 meters or 500 feet. And so these big mucus blobs just kind of like blob around the ocean, 50,000 eggs. And when they start sinking, that's sort of the time that the squids will come out of their eggs and then leave their little mucus, um, their mucus blob, uh, which is amazing to see. There's not a lot of footage out there on it, but, um, but it is really beautiful and really, really neat. Now, I am gonna show you some pictures of squids. Okay, so here is the difference between a giant squid and a colossal squid. Sometimes giant squids are taller. That does happen. But colossal squids always weigh more when they're adults because they have this giant fin, um, like I talked about, for maneuvering very fast and very, you know, to get away from sperm whales. They have quite a big mantle. Um, and as you can see, their arms are not as long as their tentacles. So their tentacles are being used for hunting and they bring those back for their arms and their arms are used for, for eating. Now, these are not giant squid. Um, these are just different squids, um, but it's very difficult because there is, um, well, there's just, there's no pictures of giant squids out in the ocean or colossal squids out in the ocean. So this is just basically, here's just some pictures of very nice squids. You can see how big their mantles are um, and just how beautiful they are. You can also see the symmetry in their face, um, how, um, how they have right eye, left eye, and then um, some of them do have these really beautiful fins. Now, this is a colossal squid beak. So this is the face, this is the mouth, of a colossal squid. Look how big that is. And remember, it's sort of like a parrot uh, bird, sort of like a parrot. And so it uses the very sharp bit of its beak to rip apart the fish. And then it has um, tons of little tiny radula, tons of small um, lines of teeth, just like a slug, to take these like big chunks of Patagonian toothfish and make them into a delicious smoothie that they can drink from. This is a picture that is uh, very generously on the internet for everyone to view from the Natural History Museum of New Zealand. Uh, if you want to see tons of more information about uh, the colossal squid, that is where the colossal squid was brought when the whalers um, unfortunately 
um, uh, got it from the ocean. And so they have tons of information and they have lots of, uh, just lots of really cool things on their website that you can look at. Now, uh, there's a model of a squid and then there's a real squid. What one is what? Um, but this is a model of a giant or a colossal squid uh, that's out in New York. And you can see that it is fighting for its life against a sperm whale. And so this is not a uh, provoked attack that a colossal squid would go after a sperm whale. It wouldn't make any sense for them to just get in a fight because that would you know, take a lot of energy. It is just defending itself. It also wouldn't attack a sperm whale to eat a sperm whale because that's way too much food for the, um, for the colossal squid to eat. They wanna have something that's smaller than them so they can jam it into their, their tummies. And here's a, this is not a colossal squid at all, but this squid is so beautiful and so great to show you because you can see its tentacles, its arms. Um, it also has like a, a beautiful um, set of fins at the top and you can see how long its mantle is. Squids are just so beautiful and so, so different from octopus, which are so different from any other animal. And this, again, is not a colossal squid. This is a giant squid, um, but this is a picture um, that whalers actually took of a squid that did get away, um, but uh, was trying to eat off of their, um, their um, fishing line. And so you can just see how, how big it looks in the wild. Um, there aren't any um, pictures of you know, colossal squid that, um, that exists because they, they do live so deep and so low. Um, and I think that it's pretty cool. They spend their life just uh, hanging out, not really being pestered by us, which uh, is pretty nice. <laughs> so that is all the pictures of colossal squid, which are so interesting and so neat. Uh, I see that there are two questions. How did the squid get those hooks? So that is a really good question. Squids have been on Earth since before dinosaurs. And so that is everything to do with evolution, where they live, what they hunt, and how they have to hunt. And so octopus, octopuses don't need to have, um, they don't need to have hooks on their arms because they hunt in a completely different way than squids do. And they eat completely different things an octopus doesn't really go after like a toothfish or like a big predator. They go after smaller things that um, they generally, uh, and they do eat more carrion, where uh, squid do a lot of active hunting. Looking at the Humboldt uh, squid as well, they hunt together and so they have these hooks to do this active hunting. Um, so it is all about evolution. Um, there were probably some squid that had hooks and some squids that didn't, and the squids that had hooks just did a really good job at eating lots of food and making lots of babies. Um, whoops. Why is it called a colossal squid? What makes it bigger than other squid? It's just huge. We call it a colossal squid because the very first time um, humans ever saw any part of it, was in the belly of a sperm whale, uh, the, the beak was. And so they just called it a colossal squid because they're like, well, this is a beak from a squid. We don't, know how, we don't know what type it is, but it looks real big. And it was real big, it was colossal. Um, and it just, it's one of those things that it does such a good job at surviving that it gets to be really, really big all of that Patagonian toothfish is good for that type of squid. And yeah, so they live in super, super deep water. Um, and the, so they live all around the Antarctic uh, Southern Ocean. And they, you know, one of the reasons we don't ever see them is because they spend so much time really, really deep. And it's so deep, it's really dark in the water, which is why they use bioluminescence. So the same thing as, um, as fireflies. Remember, fireflies use bioluminescence to show off, hey, don't eat me, I don't taste good. It's the opposite for squid. They show off and say, hey, maybe I'm a delicious little fish that you would want to eat. 
And then the Patagonian cheese fish goes, oh, I made a mistake. I thought that would be delicious. It's actually a giant squid. Oh, goodbye. Um, how do they see? So we don't actually know how they see. We do know because they are using bioluminescence. They are able to like, you know, see what's around them when they, um, when they have the light that, uh, that goes off their body. Um, but we, we don't know enough about them to know how good their eyesight is. Now remember, they have giant eyes. Their eyes are the size of soccer balls. And the biggest animal on earth, its eye is only the same, at the same size as an ostrich eye. So we think that because, um, because their eyes are so big, they're able to just have like really, really good vision. Um, it's so dark. Oh, right. So how do they stay warm? Well, as it turns out, you know, you're real big, staying warm in the ocean would be difficult. Um, but again, we don't exactly 100% know, but we do know that they have a really low metabolism. So remember, a sloth has a really low metabolism as well, and they stay warm from uh, the, the sun. So it doesn't work if you live in the ocean, of course. Um, but it does mean if you have a really low metabolism, your heart beats very, very slowly. And so if you have always lived there, and this is the environment you're used to living in, you are not going to feel very cold and you're going to be able to conserve all of the energy you have. So the energy that humans, a lot of energy that humans use is to keep warm because we really like the temperature that we live at. Squids are very happy to live at a lower temperature and they don't have to have their heart beating so much. Um, do they sleep and do they dream? It's a really good question. We don't actually know. So some people think that octopuses um, dream because when they are sleeping, we can see the, their colors changing on their body. So maybe they're dreaming, maybe they're thinking. Well, we don't actually have any idea. Um, the, the colossal squid would sleep. All animals do some type of sleeping. Some birds sleep in the air when they're flying. Some uh, are all dolphins sleep while swimming. Um, so we know that it does sleep, but we don't know how it does, what it does, what it looks like, and if they do dream. They're very intelligent though. So, um, so they're, they're thinking when they're awake, maybe they're thinking when they're sleeping. Um, Birch has a question. Um, do squids ever attack mm -hmm. ships? Yeah. Oh my gosh. So that is a super good. So colossal squids have never attacked, um, and never attacked a uh, ship, but there are some squids that are much smaller. So they're the size of like, um, so not the size of a people, not a Humboldt squid, about half that. So half the size of like an adult around you. Some of those squids, are so fast and they um, they flap their fins so much they kind of jump out of the water. Now in ancient times um, people on ships, mariners, used to think that they were like maybe mermaids which like I think is beautiful because if you confuse a mermaid, a squid with a mermaid, then you must be very body positive and I think that is wonderful. Um, so they used to think they were mermaids and they used to think if these squids are jumping out of the water, all squids must be able to. And that is where a lot of these pictures came from of sea monsters because, you know, they extrapolated from this little thing is jumping around. Sometimes they did get into smaller boats, not like really big ships, they can't go that high. But if they were rowing to shore, um, the, the mariners, then you know they would get like a squid in the boat and they would go, whoa, what if that giant beak that we saw from the belly of a sperm whale, what if that thing jumped on the boat? 
and you're at sea for a very long time, you come back home, you want to tell a story about how brave and tough and cool you are, you're going to be like, yeah, and then the squid jumped on the boat, and its mouth was this big, and it was crazy. So, so no, but I can see why that became a thing. Daniel, I see that you have a question. Um, why do colossal squids swim with their mouth? Why do old squids and octopuses swim uh, with their mouth? And why is like mm. the form like with where like up here and they swim with their mouth? Why is that? That is an excellent question. Um, so the way that they swim, so both octopuses and um, and squid have figured out a way, instead of like swimming like we do, they do swim with their siphon, with their jet propulsion. Because when they are breathing, you, they have to breathe in, um, so they have to breathe in water and take the oxygen from the water. And that, that's how they get oxygen, it's from the water. But once they take the oxygen out of the water, it has to go somewhere. And so for some fish, it just goes like through their gills. It's kind of cool. But squids and octopus evolved in this really cool way that's very efficient that they go, instead of having um, water just go through our mantle, it can go through our siphon and we can use that to spray to go really fast. And, um, and you know, also to poo. We'll always remember that. Um, and also, octopus and squid can use their siphon to squirt um, at things they don't like, or people they don't like, or things like that. So the way that they swim, they have just figured out this very efficient, very fast way to the water's already going through their body. Let's use it to propel ourselves really, really fast. Uh, what is the difference between the tentacles of the squid and the arms of an octopus? So the arms, so squids have arms and tentacles. And so arms have suction cups all the way down, but tentacles are longer and they don't have, they don't have uh, suction cups all the way down. They are skinnier and they have little clubs on the end. And that is where the suction cups are. On squids, not all of them, but on colossal squids, they do have hooks on their, um, on their arms and their tentacles. Oh, are colossal squids endangered? So this is a really good question because we don't, uh, we don't actually know if they are endangered. We don't think that they are because they are so good at hunting. Colossal squid are so good at not getting captured by, uh, by people or by, um, uh, by whalers or fishing men and women and things like that. Um, and they're, you know, they're just really good at living in the bottom of the ocean where it is still really cold. Now, it is important um, to think about climate change because these animals live in really cold water. So we do need to make sure that the water stays cold for them. So we want to, um, you know, make sure that uh, the water, the earth, doesn't heat up too much because of climate change. We want to make sure that there's lots and lots of colossal squid, always because they are so cool. Um, and remember, there are 4.3 million uh, giant squid in the world. And those are just giant squid. And so we think that there's quite a lot of colossal squid. We want to make sure that there's, there's always a lot of colossal squid. So all of us can grow up and be scientists and learn more about the squids. Carol says, what is your favorite animal that we've discussed? Absolutely not. That would be like asking my favorite friend, and I am not going to go down that road. I think that every animal is incredible um, and is amazing because every time I do animal chat time, I learn so much about animals that I thought I knew about, and I also know I also find out there's so much that we don't know about these animals. And I think that is really, really cool because that means that all of us can do our own research. We can, um, we can do research on our own. We can look at scientists and citizen science 
uh, scientists doing work and we can learn even more about these animals. There's so much to discover and learn and be curious about. And I think that is really neat and something that has happened through all of animal chat time.